It's sad that a historical subject as interesting as Napoleon has been paired with a director so uninterested in engaging with reality. These are the words of Mike Duncan, the public historian and podcaster behind the History of Rome podcast and in an article in The Nation. In response to Ridley Scott's Napoleon, historians and public figures have found little to be desired in the adaptation of Napoleon Bonaparte's life. With public historians and academics turning to Twitter, TikTok, and every other medium to talk about how much they genuinely hated the decisions made by Ridley Scott in the adaptation of Napoleon. Whether it's the inaccuracy of the age difference between Josephine and Napoleon, or the fact that in the trailer Napoleon is shooting at the pyramids, it is evident, to me at least, that a discussion about historical accuracy is quite poignant at this moment in time. And so while this video is not necessarily specifically about breaking down Napoleon and the quote-unquote historical inaccuracies present within the film, I do want to talk about the actual topic of historical inaccuracy from the point of view of a history PhD student. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I am a fourth year PhD candidate in history and African American studies at Yale University. I am writing a dissertation on the law of slavery and matrilineal descent in the early modern English Atlantic. And so while French history is not my focus and Napoleon is most certainly not my main topic of interest, historical inaccuracy within public discourse is. <laughs> And so we will begin my first ever video essay by talking about what historical accuracy is. According to scholar Laura Saxton, an accurate text reflects the accepted facts about a period, individual, or event. Authenticity refers to the experience of consuming a historical text and the audience's impression of whether it captures the past, even if it is at odds with available evidence. Now, there's a couple different things to break down here. Historical accuracy, according to historians, mostly relates to the way that historical evidence, primary sources are depicted and described and analyzed by historians within academic texts. Now it's quite different when we think about the medium of film or audio, and here's why. According to Hannah Grigg, realistic character motivations matter just as much as visual accuracies, but this is often overlooked. Oftentimes people will focus on material inaccuracies rather than how it is that an actual historical subject is depicted and how it is that their motivations are represented. Which is why I think, for example, we're so interested in costume dramas and whether or not that costuming or if the props that are used are historically accurate. I confess, I myself spent hours on TikTok or YouTube watching fashion historians break down the costuming and whether or not it is accurate within period dramas such as Downton Abbey or The Crown. But why is it that we're so interested in the materiality and its accuracy rather than the actual character motivations and how it is that the attitudes and personality of individuals are depicted? Well, the short answer is that it is very difficult to actually gleam how a person actually acted from the written material that we have available to us. If you have a variety of mediums and a variety of perspectives from which to benefit, for example, looking at newspapers, personal papers, papers and reflections of the people that were around that subject at the time, then we might get a little bit closer. But from a 21st century perspective, it's really difficult to be able to take somebody off of the page and actually depict them in a way that is quote unquote accurate to the way that that individual would have acted at the time. Oftentimes we don't have recordings of their voice. We don't get to see them in private settings and their writings, while it may be the closest piece of evidence that we have to the actual subject, are also presented in such a way that is meaningful to the person writing it down. There's always a guise behind which the individual exists. And so the central thesis of this video essentially is that history and its representations, whether that be in writing, film, a podcast, or a TV show, is generally subjective. And the way that we envision accuracy or authenticity is often dependent on our own points of view, as well as the information by which we are leveling historical accuracy. However, the caveat to this is that there's also variables that play into whether or not we think that something is blatantly inaccurate, or if it's just slightly inaccurate. We can, for example, know that a battle did not take place at the base of the pyramids because we have a lot of information as to the actual location of the event. And Ridley Scott or directors or other types of producers that create this type of historically adapted content blatantly decide to go against the evidence that is available to them. And that leads me to chapter two of this video, which is why accuracy does matter. In an article titled Synthetic Experiences, Daniel and Musgrave argue that fictional sources provide audiences with information about concepts fundamental to world politics 
including the characteristics of actors in international relations, issues important to global politics, and expectations about outcomes of strategies. They may therefore be at least influential, or in some conditions even more influential, in shaping people's worldview as more, quote, respectable sources. In this particular example, they're describing images of international relations and things related to global politics, but the argument that they make at the end still stands and can be applied in a variety of different circumstances, which is that film and other types of popular media has the ability to shape people's perceptions. If critical thought isn't applied, then someone might watch Bridgerton and think that the respectability politics of Bridgerton are the way that they were in the Regency era. And while I should hope that many people would see that and understand that it is influenced by the Regency era, I have seen examples where people tr truly believe that Bridgerton is a reflection of what to 1805 London would have looked like and how people would have behaved. You'd think that the classical rendition of Taylor Swift would probably tip people off, but people will sometimes not see the difference between historical fiction and fact. But the argument that I think is the most potent and perhaps the most important of this video is that film and popular media has the ability to enforce negative stereotypes. Those that are trained in history often seek to dismantle these types of misrepresentations or stereotypes However, the type of information that people have the most ready access to is film and historical fiction and other types of popular media. Somebody's not going to be going to a peer-reviewed journal to understand the intricacies of gender relations in the Regency era or to comprehend the political propaganda around the marriage of Napoleon and Josephine. In an article about violence and historical authenticity, Erica Ruth Sigurdsson analyzes instances where Vikings are depicted in popular media and are often represented as pillaging and committing sexual violent crimes. And while some of these representations are based on primary sources that do describe them in this way, they aren't being analyzed critically. And therefore, the depictions that we have of Vikings in journal articles, in textbooks, in romance novels, in film, often continue to perpetuate these stereotypes. And then the third point that I want to make on historical accuracy is about the method of representation, which leads me to Alison Landsberg's work on affective engagement and prosthetic memory. Affective engagement is how one emotionally interacts with and interprets a story, and then incorporates those stories' historical claims into a set of belief. According to Alison Landsberg, Prosthetic memory is defined as an audience's temporary engagement with the experiences and emotions of characters, thus creating new memories of the past. And so while media is intended for us to enjoy and to offer connection, it also has the potential to shift one's memory of the past, even though we haven't directly interacted with it. Film in particular is a medium intended to convey emotion. And when we connect emotion to a particular type of representation or imagery, that has a deep impact on us as an individual as well as as a society. And so therefore, historical accuracy has a variety of different applications. And so therefore, historical accuracy or rather inaccuracy has significant impacts on us collectively, which we should keep in mind when we're interacting with these mediums. To summarize, Historical representations within media has the ability to shape not only our own belief systems about the past and our own memories of the past, but also has the potential to impact collective memory. Now I want to offer a hopeful message about how it is that we can interact with these mediums through our own education. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is Wondrium by Great Courses. Wondrium by Great Courses is an online learning platform which gains you access to a wide array of courses taught by university professors and scholars from all across the world in a variety of subjects. With access to hundreds of different course offerings, you have an abundance of knowledge at your fingertips. And while I'm personally drawn towards the history courses, as a historian in training, they also have classes on economics, business, psychology, and so much more. And while this video's topic is historical accuracy, I would be remiss not to point out that they have a really great course on the French Revolution that you should definitely check out, especially if you're planning on going and watching the film Napoleon. Education should be a lifelong journey that doesn't just take place in the classroom. By gaining access to materials such as the classes offered on Wondrium by Great Courses, students and professionals that just want to engage with different forms of knowledge and continue learning throughout their lives can benefit from so many different subjects. Back when I was a community college transfer student at UCLA, 
I knew that I wanted to go to graduate school. And so a lot of my courses really focused around early America, the early modern English Atlantic, the Caribbean. And that meant that I wasn't able to take classes that I really wanted to. Like there was a course on the Civil War or on Russian imperial history that I just never got to take because there just wasn't enough time. And while I'm very glad that I made that decision to narrow my focus because it got me to where I am today, these are things I'm still really fascinated by. And the way that I love to engage with them is by taking courses online, watching lectures, getting to see what other scholars in fields that I might not be doing research in are working on. And while this video is about historical accuracy in popular film, we can also look to resources such as Wonder Inn by Great Courses in order to offer us that counterbalance so that way we're actually learning history from those that study it as a profession. Now, Wonder Inn by Great Courses is offering you an incredible deal, which I think would be the perfect thing for you to take advantage of in the new year, or even offer as a gift to a friend or a family member who really likes history or who really likes taking classes, because with the link in my description, you get a 50% discount on their subscription service for three months. So that is three months for only $10 a month, which is an incredible deal. Think about it. People pay thousands to take classes with these professors and you get to do it for a massive discount. And not only that, but you get to access hundreds of courses in a variety of topics and wow both yourself and your friends with all of the things that you know, especially when you go to watch that newly released historical film and you're able to say what is accurate and what is inaccurate. I think that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. If you're interested, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And thank you again so much to Wonder Inn by Great Courses for sponsoring today's video. But without further ado, we have yet another chapter because there is so much more we still have to unpack. Chapter three of this video is all about inaccuracy with a purpose. First and foremost, popular historical media increases interest in history. And as a historian in training, that is a good thing. The thing that personally led me to a love of history was Ken Burns' Lewis and Clark. I watched it back when I was a kid. My mom took me to the IMAX theater and I was hooked. I just absolutely fell in love, not only with history, but with the actual medium of documentaries. And I personally love a good period drama. And even though I am personally getting a PhD in history, there are areas of history that I know nothing about. And one of my favorite things to do is to read a historical fiction or to watch a historical adaptation or a historically influenced film. And that way I can immerse myself in that subject and gain further interest. Which leads me to point number two, which is that a general interest in history increases book sales. You heard that right. Not only has book talk and popular media impacted book sales generally, it has also impacted the way that we interact with knowledge and seek it out within literature or within nonfiction books. Not only is this great for the publishing industry, but I also think it's wonderful for public media to pique people's curiosity and lead them to ask further questions about the past. And that leads me to my third point, which is that an analysis of historical inaccuracy leads to further engagement with history. I personally love watching public historians make YouTube videos critically analyzing popular history media. And that leads me, and it also generally leads other viewers to ask further questions and to do further research. I don't know about you, but I think that that is just absolutely wonderful. Anything that leads others to critical thought and to continue asking questions and to dig a little further, I think is a very positive thing. Chapter four, Hayden White's historical narrativity. The work that historians do is known as historiography. We engage with not only the primary sources that we are analyzing, but we also look at the work that has been done by other historians, and then we write and publish our analyses. Hayden White's theory of historiophity, on the other hand, is all about how history is represented through visual mediums. And Hayden White presents the question, to what extent is it possible to translate a given written account of history into visual auditory equivalent without significant loss to its content. Now, I don't have an answer for this. And this is where the historians and the media studies scholars will continue having this debate for years and years. And so I'd really like to know your opinion in the comments. Now, before I sign off, I have one more existential question about how history can be translated in a visual medium, which is how can visual mediums act as a method for historians to ask and answer historical questions. Thus, I will leave you with a quote by Robert Robinstone, who states that films suggest new possibilities for representing the past. 
possibilities that could allow narrative history to recapture the power it once had when it was more deeply rooted in the literary imagination. We previously learned about the past through literary and written sources, and now we're learning about it through visual and auditory mediums. And that opens the door to a whole new world of historical media as method. And I, as a historian, am personally very excited about it. We've now come to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. All of the sources that I used and cited in this video essay are going to be linked in the description below, along with some recommendations for some of my favorite YouTubers, TikTokers, and Instagram history content creators that I think that you should check out. And thank you again to Wondrium by Great Courses for sponsoring this one. If you are interested in checking out Great Courses for yourself, then go ahead and check out the link in the description below. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, as well as leave me a comment if you enjoyed this type of content. I cannot wait to make more history videos in the future. I will see you all in the next video. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.